Any attention to this mask until your clothes and soul is safe from coming to all. Yet I'm wearing masks and have bowed the Son and thee, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we now acknowledge our many sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words. What I have done, what I have failed to do, my fault, but my fault, my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask to marry the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, O Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the heights, and on earth peace to people of the will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God, my Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, grace is our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One, the Lord of the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, who manifests your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, so we pray your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to, convert, to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must stop but if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy. Complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. 
each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Amen. Ignore the problem. 
we could easily see and imagine this father being quite weary of his sons. How he has to treat them both equally, and yet it doesn't seem to work out. It doesn't seem fair. It's much more difficult to imagine Jesus Christ as he too endures the agony of the cross later on, as he is trying to keep his spirits up, give hope to the people watching him die. All those who are whining and complaining, all those that ran away from him, even knowing him. It was not too long before the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, they were all stand up proclaiming, we are yours, command us, and we will do as you say. We will go out into the world baptizing the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will forgive sins. We will do everything you ask us to do. Except when you go and die, we're going to forget it. We can do you. A lot of yes, men, not going through with it. Today's gospel is challenging you and I to question whether or not we truly are honest with our God. Think about those people who think that they know where God is coming from, what God is going to do for them, how they lived a fantastic life, had no regrets whatsoever, not shaken by the prospect of death to come, and they will go to their cross with open arms and they will die with God on their lips. They see loved ones pass on. Mortality is something they have to go through. There'll be no more worlds to conquer. There'll be no more need to fear. If there is a judge, they believe there's nothing they have done to be ashamed of. Now we might suppose the second son of David's gospel story felt this way about his relationship with his dad. He had said he would go out to the vineyard, but he doesn't. Remind that old man, he'll get over it. We've done this in song and dance before. If the first son was more obedient, he, did he not also react disrespectfully by first saying no? For some reason, society detests that one. We ended up changing his mind, seeing the error of his ways, repenting, going before God, having God say, I should do better, I should have known better. I just reacted out of fear, out of tiredness, out of defiance, out of thinking I know better than you, God. Here again, the gospel of Matthew. Amen, I say to you. When he says amen, that means pay attention. Tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John the Baptist came to you in a way of righteousness, you didn't believe him. All he did was say, I'm preparing the way of the Lord for you. The tax collectors, the prostitutes, those with sin, those who recognize their sin, those who acknowledge their sin, those who can name their sin and want to be healed from that sin, to be free from the burden of sin, they're the ones who said this. I'm paying attention to you. I want to be relieved of all this stuff that's holding me back. I'm going to listen to you, John the Baptist. Tell me more. Is there a newsletter I can sign up for? The righteous ones, the leaders, the priests, the Pharisees, the scribes, the people with the good life, the ones who don't have to worry about how am I going to pay the rent this month, how am I going to pay the electric this month, and didn't I just pay that last month? The ones who had no financial worries whatsoever, who had no concern about where their meals were going to come from, their health care was going to be provided, all that stuff that we all have to worry about now. Whether or not I keep employees or let them go. They walk around like they're at the top of the pile, standing down looking upon the rest of the world, not a care in the world, no regrets. Yet, Jesus Christ says in the gospel that even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe that. When you saw the people who you consider to be less than you, clamoring, falling, walking, following, preaching, proclaiming, and listening to the word of God, come from John the Baptist, they wanted to know more where is the Savior of the universe? When can I meet him? Jesus Christ is speaking to the chief, priests, elders, the people. 
very direct, very condemning. Their words spoken to awaken the consciousness of them at the time. Because these religious leaders were so full of pride, so full of self righteousness, they were told that you are the best of the best and nothing can bother you. They held on to their own opinions, and their opinions were simply wrong. Their pride kept them from discovering the simple truth that tax collectors and prostitutes are human beings as well, and they are the children of God as well, made in the image of God as well. For that very reason, Jesus Christ makes it very clear to you and I that anybody who is on the path of holiness, no matter what has happened to them in their life before, very good thing. You must accept that and celebrate that and help them along the way. So in which category do we find ourselves here? As we are fast racing to the end of the liturgical year. Sometimes those who are considered religious, pious, struggle with a similar pride and behavior of judgment. So the chief priests and elders did at the time of Jesus when he appeared on the scene out of the blue, they didn't know what to do with him. Instead of trying to get to know Jesus Christ, instead of trying to work with him, instead of opening up their minds and their hearts and their souls to the possibility that God is a loving and merciful, compassionate God, they continued to hold on to God as being judgmental and mean and a tyrant. And if you did anything wrong, you were going to hell for that. But now Jesus Christ simply says, no, there's an absolutely different path you can take. You can have your sins. You can be called a sinner. You can also change your life. Later, change your mind. Change your heart. Change your soul. Change your behavior. Change your attitude. Change everything you want about yourself. Because God is love. God created so that he Perhaps the most important lesson that you and I can take from this gospel. Be humble before God. Have an openness. Be genuine. Be accepting of our brothers and sisters. Those tax collectors and the prostitutes, they were praised by Jesus Christ because they would see and accept the truth that they could be different. We're sinners that God can forgive sin and does forgive sin when you and I make ourselves aware of such sin. If you and I are not willing to see our own sin and we keep pushing it away or denying that we're sinners, then it's going to be quite impossible for us to ever accept the grace of God to enter in and heal us of that sin. Because make no, no mistake, sin is a crippling medical condition anymore. It gets inside of us, it starts to wear down our muscles, our tendons, our bones start to crack under the pressure of it. We don't know what to do, and our mental capacity is under strain. Because we keep going back to that sin, the thing that has hurt us, that's kept us away from our God and from one another. The thing that has hurt us, separated us, hurt us into the fire. All the things that Jesus Christ went through the cross, rose to the dead, removed. As we continue our day to day, perhaps we can reflect and begin to open up our eyes to see the truth of God. Begin to see our own fallen and sinful state. Stop criticizing and judging other human beings before we look at our own selves in the mirror. Look internally into our hearts and souls. We must not be afraid to humble ourselves before God, to admit our faults and our failures, and to ask for His help. That's what reconciliation is. We go to God asking for help. Falling down at the bottom, I need help. I don't want to do this anymore. Show me a path, a way, a light that I can hold on to, guide me, so I do not have to start this sin, so that I do not look at my brothers and sisters with judgment, harshness, and hatred, that I have humility, that I am a child of God, and so. We can embrace this level, this death of humility. Oh, the doors of God's mercy is open to us all. So I'll stand and prevent, sir.
faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, of the Father, for all ages, God and God, light and light, God and true God. He God did not made the consubstantial of the Father, whom all things were made. As men for our salvation, he came down to heaven by the Holy Spirit, incarnate in Mary and in man. For our sake, he was crucified under our conscience in Thailand. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and seated at the right of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord. Life, who sees the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess all that has for the forgiveness of sins, that I look forward to be resurrected the dead, and life will to come. Amen. My dear people in Christ, let us now be one in prayer to God, our Holy Father, as we are one in faith, hope, and charity. His Spirit gives us all. For Pope Francis, Bishop DeWayne, and all priests, deacons, and religious, that the Holy Spirit continue to give them the grace and strength they need to proclaim the good news to those who have not heard. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For a special priest vocations to the brief priesthood and to consecrated life, so that all generations will proclaim God's love for us, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our students who begin faith formation, that the Holy Spirit will guide them in their behaviors and decisions, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering mentally, physically, and economically during this pandemic, that they will find help during this crisis, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our relatives and friends who have died, especially those who have died from the virus, they may be welcomed by the angels and saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts and minds. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Now, Holy Father, you sent your Holy Spirit upon the apostles and through them and their successors to give the Spirit to your people. May the good work be done at Pentecost and continue to grow in the hearts of all who believe you this day. This prayer of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, from God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice of yours is such a God. The Almighty Father. Grant us, so merciful God, this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, and through it, the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, you laid the foundations of the world, you have arranged the changing of times and seasons, you formed man in your own image, you set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. So now with all the angels we praise you as a joyful celebration, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are so glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the kingdom of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. With holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sitting down your spirit upon them as the dewfall, that they may become for us. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this of all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Turned away when supper was ended. He took the chalice, once more gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Save the world. By your cross and resurrection, and has set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. To be thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. On whom we pray for taking of the body and blood of Christ. Be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, grant us our Pope and bring our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. Pray. The Blessed Virgin Mary, pray to God, St. Joseph, her spouse, for the blessed apostles. And all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit the heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor and to you forever and ever. Lord, we pray for the evil, graciously grant peace in 
in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace unto you, my peace I give you. Not our sin, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And God. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, so we may be co heirs and glory with Christ, whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death. Lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now, my God, we bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, Lord, by the Lord, by your life. Praise be to God. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protected against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God give you the human name, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts. Our God, as in the hell of Satan, and all the spirits who roam around the world, and the ruin of souls, 